Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Today I want to talk to you about what are VOCs and what are the top five VOC sources inside your home. Stay tuned. If you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to crawl space encapsulation, indoor air quality, insulation. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel, ring that notifications bell, follow us on Facebook, check out our DIY store and our franchise opportunities. Those of you that are not familiar with Crawl Space Ninja, a lot of what we talk about has to do with indoor air quality. The reason why we encapsulate crawl spaces the way we do is always to try to improve the indoor air quality of the home. So I wanted to come up with a list of the top five places that many homeowners don't realize that, that are off-gassing VOCs. But first, let's talk about what a VOC is according to the EPA. So according to the Environmental Protection Agency, a VOC is a volatile organic compound and they are compounds that have high vapor pressure and low water solubility. Many VOCs are human-made chemicals that are used and produced in the manufacturing of paints, pharmaceuticals, and refrigerants. VOCs typically are industrial solvents such as trichloroethylene, fuel oxygenates such as methyl tert-butyl ether, MTBE, or byproducts produced by chlorination and water treatment, such as chloroform. VOCs are often compounds of petroleum fuels, hydraulic fluids, paint thinners, and dry cleaning products, and VOCs are common groundwater contaminants. Wow, so that doesn't sound like anything I want inside my home, but the problem is a lot of homes are riddled with VOCs and products and building materials that off-gas volatile organic compounds. So it got me thinking, does the EPA regulate VOCs in household products? So here's what they said. The EPA does regulate VOCs in some household products under the Clean Air Act or the CAA. However, the regulations that we have promulgated for VOCs in architectural coatings and consumer products are in place only because Many VOCs photochemically react to the atmosphere to produce ozone, a component of smog. So the only regulation they do has to do with the air outside, not necessarily the air inside. The short answer is yes, we regulate, but only if it hurts the environment, not because it is harmful to you. Need further proof? Listen to what the EPA says. From the standpoint of indoor air quality, the definition of VOCs and their regulation under the CAA, which is the Clean Air Act, sometimes causes confusion. The reason is that some chemicals that are toxic are exempt from the VOC regulations because they are not considered to be photochemically reactive. Therefore, some products that are labeled as no VOC or low VOC under the CAA can actually contain volatile organic chemicals that are toxic, sometimes at high levels. So that low VOC product that you purchased because you thought, oh, well, it doesn't off-gas anything, uh, it can still off-gas. Okay, the only reason why it says it's low VOC or no VOC is because it doesn't affect the ozone layer, basically, not because it doesn't affect you. Isn't that interesting that that's how they rate whether something's low VOC or not? In other words, that low VOC paint you applied may still be toxic to you, but according to the CAA is not toxic to the environment. So I feel like that is very important to understand because, you know, that new car smell that you love so much, the air freshener that you spray that smells like a mountain and all that kind of stuff, all of those odors that, that is tricking your nose into thinking you're standing in a meadow on the side of a cliff, is actually chemicals that they use, and those chemicals may or may not be toxic, and that's up to you to determine. So with all that being said, let's talk about five things that are going on in your house that are off-gassing VOCs. These are in no particular order, they're not ranked or anything like that, but uh, let's get into that. Number one is going to be the manufactured furniture. Now, I love manufactured furniture, we all do. We all buy it, order it, assemble it, you know, desks and beds and all that kind of stuff, but believe it or not, this low cost and easy to assemble furniture can contain high levels of formaldehyde, a VOC that is carcinogenic. Formaldehyde is uh, presented in the resins, preservatives, and sealants used in pressed wood. So let me ask you a question. Please comment below. Where else do you find a lot of pressed wood inside your house? So I wanna know that uh, also. So 
pressed wood things like furnitures. What are some other things that have pressed wood that might contain VOCs? The second thing I came across, obviously I've already mentioned, are paints. You know, anytime you paint a room, some people even like the smell of paint, but just because it says low VOC, it only means that it's low VOC to the environment, not necessarily to you. So if you're gonna be painting a room, you know, especially new parents, I mean, even, even us, whenever our kids were about to be born, we were fixing up that nursery and we were painting the room and all that kind of stuff. And then we take this new baby and stick them in that room that's full of uh, VOCs from the pressed furniture that I just assembled all night and all that sort of stuff. So you wanna be careful about exposing children with weak immune systems to VOC. So if you're going to be painting and different things like that, make sure you air out the room, make sure you're using some type of respirator while you're painting and all that sort of thing to help avoid some of the reactions that your body might have from those no VOC paints. The third one obviously is cleaning products. A lot of people today use bleaches and different things like that uh, to get rid of mold, to get rid of that stain in your shower, to sanitize those countertops before you put that chicken breast on there and start cutting it and preparing it for your food. So a lot of chemicals today, uh, a lot of cleaning products has some pretty harsh chemicals. A lot of those chemicals uh, actually have dual purposes. So even though they might make something smell good or disinfect, they have dual purposes. They could even be used as herbicides or pesticides or different things like that. So make sure you're reading the chemicals that are in those cleaning products. And I'm not here to endorse any particular cleaning product. If you all have one that you like, make sure you put it in the comments down below, but try to choose a, a cleaning product that is really good for you and the indoor environment, the indoor air quality that you live in. This one was kind of shocking. Did you know that mothballs are actually uh, off-gassing VOCs? I mean, uh, according to, to what uh, I read, they contain dichlorobenzene, which is also common in many household deodorizers. Dichlorobenzenes do not occur naturally in our environment and are used as herbicides, pesticides, medicine, dyes, and of course, deodorizers. Inhalation can lead to coughing and breathing difficulties along with headaches, dizziness, and liver damage. So I had a lady that um, had an odor up in her attic and she said that she took a, a box of mothballs and threw them up in the attic to try to fight that odor. And it wound up making her entire home smell like mothballs. And she had such a hard time getting that smell out. All the insulation had to be removed and everything, but it's just a, a very difficult odor or VOC to get rid of. So if you're using mothballs, try to find an alternative to keep those moths away that's not uh, loaded up with uh, dichlorobenzene. And lastly, uh, this may hit a nerve with some of you, but those scented candles and those air fresheners that you plug into the walls and different things like that, as I mentioned, those odors or that freshener, that smell, a lot of times come from chemicals. Now, I'm not saying all candles are bad. Do your homework, do your research, try to find those ones that maybe use natural products that makes your home smell nice, because I know a lot of you out there enjoy the smell of those candles and different things like that. And again, I'm not here to endorse anything in particular, but even if you are using a natural candle, just remember that the candle itself, the burning creates carbon dioxides and carbon monoxides. Now I'm not saying it's gonna be enough to harm you, but if you're a huge candle burner and you walk in and it looks like the set of Carrie, where there's like a hundred candles burning like that, you know, and you got all this carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide going on, you may want to blow a few of those out and open a window. Okay, so uh, just be aware of VOCs in your home. And I hope this information helped all of you because we want to make sure that we educate you all to improve your indoor air quality. Remember, your home is a sanctuary. You don't want to be outside where the allergens are bad or the pollen is bad, especially right now. Uh, and then walk into your house and come to find out the air inside your home is worse than the air outside. So we just want to make sure you uh, do everything you can to protect yourself. I'm Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja. We hope you make it a happy and blessed day and we'll see you later.